What's going on, YouTube? You don't have to pay all that close of attention to realize that Americans love their trucks, and in particular, ones from the big three. But they certainly aren't the only ones in the truck segment, with Toyota making new waves courtesy of the new Tundra. It now brings far more than just a reputation of reliability to the table. So is this luxury turbo hybrid truck ready to take down the king of luxury trucks, the Ram 1500? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Now before we really start to dig in, let's talk pricing and equipment levels. In this comparison, we got the loaded luxury trims to show off all the best stuff. But that does mean the prices are pretty eye-watering. Starting with the Ram 1500, we have the limited trim, which is already extremely nice, but even more so after optioning on over $13,000 of additional equipment. All in, we come in just under $84,000. Now with the new generation of Tundra, the price doesn't undercut the American truck by much when we select the fully loaded capstone. It doesn't have any meaningful equipment to add, so the total price is just over 81 grand. By the way, if you want to get the best price from local dealerships and access to invoice pricing info for these two models or any vehicle, we have a tool on our website to do just that. Check the link in the description for more information. Now as far as this comparison, it will be conducted objectively. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories, but at the end of the comparison, we will sum up with our thoughts and revisit the price difference for a value assessment. With that being said, let's get into this comparison. So as we first take a look at the exterior designs, obviously they aren't very similar at all. That is, besides for both being finished in beautiful blue colors, and their generous use of chrome in the front. Neither model will leave any doubt you are driving the fully loaded models. And the premium full LED headlight clusters will make sure you can blind lowly sedan peasants with ease. The Tundra has cool dynamic turn signals, and both of them have LED fog lamps. Moving to the side, both are only available in crew cab configurations for the top trims. And both also come equipped with elaborate and distinct looking 22 inch alloy wheels. As far as the rear looks, again you have premium designs and elements like LED taillights, exposed exhaust outlets, and chrome accents. And that's where we'll start to move into the individual features, because the tailgates have a lot of features that need highlighting. The gate itself has a neat splitting function on the ram for easier access to the bed. The Toyota has a tailgate mounted elbow release button, and both of them have dampened lowering. Getting into the bed is made easier in the capstone thanks to a power deploying step. And once you get inside, both have spray on bed liners. They also have LED lighting, tie downs, and hooks, but only the Tundra has a powerful 400 watt outlet. Moving past that, both models have fully loaded mirrors with heating, power folding, auto dimming, and blind spot monitoring. And as far as all other safety features, Toyota includes all the active ones as standard equipment, such as lane cubing assist and adaptive cruise, while our RAM also has them via the level 1 equipment group. Warranty coverages are the same, besides for Toyota including 2 years of complimentary maintenance. And finally, the towing advantage belongs to the Capstone Tundra with an over 10,000 pound rating. Anyway, that's the end of the exterior comparison. But now let's see the impressive interiors, and then we'll take them out for a drive. But first... If you're new here, we're brothers, and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. So walking up to the trucks, both are obviously going to have smart entry systems with remote startability but the Tundra does require an active subscription after the trial period expires. The days of stretching to get inside your truck are over with large power running boards 
and they whisk you into elaborate and luxurious cabins. These are certainly not the trucks you rode around the family farm in during the old days, since we have high-end materials everywhere, including the seats. In the Ram, we have black or blue premium stitch leather. And in the Toyota, we have two-tone semi-aniline leather with contrast piping. Both seats are heated and ventilated. However, the Tundra has more ways of adjustment, like power thigh extension. But let's get inside and evaluate the overall materials. It's hard to convey just how nicely these cabins are executed, with all the commonly touched areas smothered in leather and real open pore wood. The limited RAM still exceeds the capstone Tundra by a bit though, with no hard touch plastics within reach at all, and real aluminum elements replacing what is silver painted trim on the Tundra. Now after startup, the Ram 1500 has a 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster with all kinds of useful info, just like the Tundra. Both also have large head-up displays. Of course, it pretty much goes without saying that both steering wheels are heated and leather wrapped, but the Ram's is not power adjusting. Oppositely, it's only the Ram that has power adjusting pedals. Now the next area to evaluate is interior storage, where both are enormous. However, the Ram is positively cavernous. Since its shifter is not on the center console, that allows the entire area to be a multifunctional storage area with a very neat sliding arrangement. Now speaking of shifters, the Tundra keeps it classic with the traditional one, while the Ram 1500 has the rotary style. We won't make any determinations about which one is better, but we can say that the Tundra's 360 degree camera is the superior one. It's not an angles thing, since both of them have a ton of them, but the orientation of the screen makes the image so much smaller than the Toyota's. Both have systems that help with backing up trailers as well. Alrighty, that brings us to the audio systems, so let's sample. While the Tundra Capstone's JBL is certainly an upgrade over the standard system, it lacks the quality and fullness of the Ram's Hard and Carden. With 19 speakers, it is truly a luxurious audio experience. And I can't forget to mention that it also has numerous real metal speaker grills instead of the faux metal covers on the Tundra. Now let's go ahead and check out the mega screens. The Ram's massive 12.3 inch display spent a few years as the undisputed king, but now the Tundra has actually exceeded it with a 14 inch display. Even though they're oriented in opposite ways, that's about 13% more screen real estate. Software wise, they both have the latest versions, which include things such as wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, as well as built in navigation. Both have large buttons, so they aren't very distracting to use while you're driving. Finally, ending the front areas, the trucks have rear camera mirrors and large panoramic moonroofs, but only the Tundra has a full roll-down rear window. But we're not quite done with the interiors yet, because we have cavernous rear seats as well. I think a ton of people forget just how big full-size trucks are these days, because with over 45 inches of legroom, the Ram 1500 has more space than the Mercedes S-Class. While the Tundra is enormous as well, the Ram still beats it by about 8% more legroom, and headroom is less than the 5% difference required to score a point. As a matter of fact, there is enough excess legroom that the Ram 1500 added reclining seats, which is a class exclusive feature. Materials from the front fall through to the back, and they are loaded with amenities such as rear vents, household power outlets, and USBs, 
which the Ram has more of. The American truck no longer has the class exclusive on ventilated rear seats since the capstone Tundra has them in addition to heating. If we fold down the armrest, the Ram has a full center console instead of just cup holders, but the Tundra fights back with window sunshades. The Ram also has two advantages as far as storage is concerned, since it has underseat storage and even hidden underfloor storage, both of which are missing from the Tundra since that is where its hybrid battery packs live. This is still a tight race leaving the interiors, so now let's see who can pull off the win out on the streets. Now these two have been very different throughout this video, and they continue that trend under the hood. The Ram 1500 has a mostly old school setup, with a traditional 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine, but with a mild hybrid system called E-Torque. This makes just under 400 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque, both of which are exceeded by the Tundra's new school powertrain approach. It swaps a V8 for a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, but with electric hybrid componentry added to it, making about 10% more horsepower than the Ram and 35% more torque. This does mean that the Tundra is faster, but perhaps not by the margin you would expect because of the added weight. Yeah. And that was 60 miles an hour, just like that. It's certainly a very quick option when you choose the iForce Max because it does have a maximum power as we kind of discussed with the spec dump at the beginning. So just to recap a little bit, 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine plus all the battery electric componentry, and your total output is gonna be the 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque, so a lot of horsepower, a ton of torque. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little, <laughs> little preview as we climb up the hill here and stop at this red light obviously plenty of power um, as you'd expect this is the hemi v8 you guys know what hemi means hemi means v8 muscle yep <laughs> as far as the transmissions are concerned both are very smooth and well calibrated 8 and 10 speed automatics both also have four-wheel drive systems, although there's no automatic mode on the Tundra. Now let's sort of talk about the transmission. Uh, we've got an eight-speed automatic transmission. Really good transmission. Um, as you can see, very smooth. Um, you really, as you go up the gears, really there's, it's seamless shifting. Um, I'd say it's definitely as smooth as the 10-speed automatic that you get in the Silverado and Sierra, for instance. Yeah. Now, as far as the other aspect of the powertrain, that's the transmission. We have a 10-speed automatic transmission, and boy, is this sucker smooth. <laughs> you could see yeah. how it was going through the gears just really fast and really smoothly. But perhaps more important than the power is ride quality. Now make no mistake, the Tundra Capstone still rides very nicely for a truck. But those are the key words, for a truck. The Ram rides great for any kind of vehicle and feels more akin to piloting a luxury SUV down the road thanks to its class exclusive air suspension. And of course, I would be completely uh, remiss to not at least mention the ride quality in this Ram 1500 Limited because you heard us say on the outside, this does have a standard air suspension. That's a big difference from other uh, 
1500 series uh, trucks and full-size pickups because this is the only one that offers that and indeed that does translate to a really incredible ride quality. I mean you hit a bump and it does a phenomenal job of soaking it up despite us having 22 inch alloy wheels hands down this is the best uh, full-size pickup that you can get in terms of the ride quality right exactly this is really one of the biggest things that distinguishes the ram from the competition and the ride quality of this tundra is very good for a truck um, it is going to be lacking behind uh, something like a ram 1500 with the full air suspension that you will get on the limited trim level besides for ride this also helps with increased clearance off-road and less clearance when entering the cabin or hooking up a trailer. These two are also more akin to luxury vehicles when it comes to sound entering the cabins. Both score under 55 decibels on Kentucky roads, which is very impressive. The average adult can discern a difference of one decibel, so no points will be awarded here. Now that we're going 55 miles an hour, I don't want to leave you waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and get the sound level reading for this Ram 1500 Limited. Make sure we're on uh, fan speed one. Fifty four point two is our official car confection sound level read. Official car confection sound level reading coming in at fifty four point nine decibels. Finally, when it comes to fuel economy, the Tundra is certainly not a hybrid in the same sense as a Prius. This system is all about increasing power, which is why it achieves very similar MPGs to the Rams V eight at 19 versus 20 combined. Before we wrap up here, we will circle back to value as promised. The price difference between these two is $1,945, which will award the Tundra a half point based on our scale. As always, I'll remind you that if money doesn't matter as much to you, then feel free to disregard these points. Well, that was a close one. Each one has their own unique pros. And because of just how tight this race was, let's recap and figure out who should be your winner depending on what your individual priorities are. Yep. So the Ram would be your winner if you prefer that traditional V8 experience versus the V6 hybrid that you get in the Tundra. You also might prefer the Ram if you want the ultimate luxury cabin and audio experience if you want the more spacious rear seats with that additional underfloor storage. And of course, the air suspension is a big one that yeah. you cannot get on any other truck on the market. And you might prefer the Toyota Tundra if you want that more powerful uh, engine system. Now, it is a hybrid, but it also does have more power than the Ram. It has a ton of torque. Additionally, the Tundra is going to have a slightly lower price tag, and it's going to have Toyota's reputation for reliability. So if you're one of those people that really likes that reputation, certainly get the Tundra over the Ram. But we want to know which one of these luxury trucks you are taking in the comments down below. Is it going to be the Tundra or is it going to be the Ram 1500? We're curious to know your thoughts. Now, additionally, we do want to encourage you if you're looking to buy a new truck or any new vehicle to go to carconfections.com slash new car quotes, because on our website, we have a tool that will connect you with local dealers in your area to get you the best price. Additionally, it's going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of those things, a link is provided in our video description. Also, we want to go ahead and thank all of our current subscribers for watching. We really appreciate your continued support because you do make this all possible. And if you're not already a fan and subscriber of the channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. We want to welcome you into this Car Confections family because we do a lot of really cool car comparisons, full reviews, and auto show coverage that you won't want to miss out on. And we like to have a lot of fun on this channel. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.